I'm here with Alex Brown, chair of the stream on diabetes in indigenous people. Alex, wonderful to meet you. Thank you very much for the time today. How prevalent is diabetes in indigenous communities? Well, we're quite aware that um, indigenous people make up a very broad and varied population around the world. So it's very hard to have any sense of homogeneity across very different communities from cultural backgrounds, geographical location and history with their uh, experience of member states. What we do know is though that there are any number of indigenous communities around the world with extremely high prevalence rates of type 2 diabetes. We know in Australia for example that uh, more than half of uh, Aboriginal people over the age of 50 in some communities have two, type 2 diabetes. We know the rates across communities, the entire community is between 15 and 30 percent which is extremely high on an international scale. This data has been replicated in Indigenous peoples in the Pacific, in New Zealand, in the US and in Canada and there is an emerging evidence of increasing rates of type 2 diabetes in other Indigenous populations around the world. It really is casting a long shadow over the, the experience of well-being and life for, for very vulnerable individuals in Indigenous communities. And what are some of the main contributing factors to this burden? Well, there are probably many factors that contribute. We're certainly aware of the significant impact of rapid transition of people's lives from, from more traditional ways, uh, traditional diets, traditional ways of living, uh, traditional ways of, of uh, connecting with the land and with that life uh, imperative. There's been a very rapid transition between that and westernised lifestyles. This has probably outstripped uh, our, our pace as communities to be able to handle this, this very sort of toxic environment, this, this westernised lifestyle. There are also a range of other issues around access to services, the ability to f afford healthy, uh, accessible food, uh, our ability to access the sort of health services and care that we, we need as Indigenous peoples for a whole raft of reasons. Uh, a lot of it due to, due to just sim simple geographical access. But there are any number of factors around access to healthcare services that are there but are culturally inappropriate or difficult for people to, to access. So we have this nexus of very complicated social, environmental and socio-cultural factors at play and unfortunately Indigenous peoples around the world are experiencing uh, extremely high rates of disease. So what do we need to do in order to stop it in its tracks and also to support those in indigenous, indigenous communities who have diabetes? So I'll take the second part first. I, I think w there, are, there is a significant amount of evidence to suggest the sorts of care that should be provided to all people who have type 2 diabetes or who are at risk. So I think we have to get much better at screening to identify as early as possible in the, in the um, continuum of risk and disease uh, individuals who could benefit from access to care. I think we need to be much better at delivering the health services and the types of care that we already know that people should be able to access. Uh, we need to engage better with our patients and our communities to understand the impact of diabetes, particularly around its complications, so we have a shared narrative about what needs to be done. Uh, we need to develop accessible health ser care services that are culturally appropriate. These are fundamental human rights that we often take for granted in, in uh, developed or, or high income environments, uh, countries. But there are a number of people who really are missing the boat on this. Uh, in terms of what needs to be, to be done from a prevention lens, uh, clearly healthy, accessible and affordable food is, is really a fundamental. Um, you would think in a country like Australia, uh, we should be able to handle this issue of logistics supply of, of healthy, affordable food. We still haven't got that. There are many communities who experience profound disadvantage and on top of that, high cost of, of healthy foods. Uh, as, as a consequence of both of those things, we, we really have a very difficult environment around accessible food and, and healthy nutrition. And these are the things that we tell our patients they must do uh, without actually creating an environment around which they can choose the choices we want them to choose. Um, we also know a very strong narrative around intergenerational effects. So we're starting to see high rates of diabetes in pregnancy in Indigenous women all around the world. This has incredibly important consequences for that child who at young age is much more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. 
There is now emerging evidence from the United States and, and Canada that the next generation of these kids are even at higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So we have intergenerational impacts that need to be intervened in and that's only going to happen through preconception care and, and much better access to antenatal care and services for Aboriginal women and Indigenous women at risk or with type 2 diabetes. I think then we have other issues around socio-cultural development. One is economic development for marginalised populations. This is the holy grail of disadvantage all around the world uh, and it's something we all strive for but it's going to be difficult to overcome diabetes without that sort of um, significant change within our, within, within our societies. We then have issues about identifying Indigenous-led solutions for, for Indigenous people and uh, there's a very strong narrative about empowerment, about the rights of, of marginalised people to be a part of the solutions to their own future and I think we have to do much better at giving Indigenous people voice and supporting them with solutions that they themselves identify. We can do that. Uh, of all the things that we can do in this society, we should be much better at doing that. Such valuable work that you're doing, Alex. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for your time.